Welcome back to Flora and the Novice Explorers. We have just reached Sardinia, the second largest island in the Mediterranean and one of the 20 regions of Italy. This is our 10th country on our year-long European adventure. Mm, wait for better days to come and carry us like wind in our sails. We've been living and travelling in our self-converted VW T5 campervan Flora for the last nine months. We've had a truly amazing trip, roaming free without stress or restrictions. However, this was all about to change. So we caught the ferry from Toulon in France on the evening of the 8th of March. It was an overnight ferry and we arrived in Porto Torres, Sardinia at about 12 o'clock lunchtime on the 9th of March. We were given the heads up about this spot and we headed straight here after disembarking the ferry and it's been absolutely incredible. We really enjoyed our first few days here. Yeah, it is an amazing spot and just to see, this is our view. Within 10 hours of us arriving, the whole of Italy went into lockdown and this included Sardinia too. So obviously we had no idea that this was going to happen and we actually avoided travelling to mainland Italy for these reasons, that's why we caught a ferry to Sardinia. We'll be keeping up to date with the direct gov updates, we were getting those through emails and checking the website periodically and at the time of our travel it was still okay to come into Sardinia. We've been here for about four days now, and to be quite honest, we've been enjoying our surroundings. Yes, but we are waiting to hear what we should do next. We came prepared with water and food for a fair few days, which I think in hindsight was possibly a very good idea. Yes. But we are sat waiting to hear what we should be doing next. We've been in pretty much complete solitude, except for this little lady. So this is Matilda. At first we thought she was a stray, but we soon found out that she's a beach dog and she lives here. I guess I know I love you too, but you're a beach dog and you live here. She's 13 years old and she is looked after and fed by the locals. And she also goes to the vets, don't you? And yeah, she lives here. This is her house. I think she lives under the little beach shack but you're happy and you're content and she's very friendly and very, very loving. <laughs> There's a little poster that basically says, don't remove me, this is where I live and she's got the best life, honestly. She probably gets petted and well looked after by visitors and uh, she's a lovely little dog. And we've kind of fallen into some sort of weird routine where she's, um, <clears throat> she's outside the van first thing in the morning when we wake up and gives us a little growl, friendly growl. <laughs> she whimper. She just, little whimper. Whoa. And then of an evening we take her on a walk because her favourite thing is chasing birds that are like twice her size. So we get to walk the length of this beach uh, with our temporary dog. We've got all the, uh, the benefits of having a dog without having to <laughs> bring her home. But I think we might want to. Not that we can, but you would be very welcome in Flora. She won't step in Flora actually, will she? No. I think she might have been um, scared once. It was funny when we uh, first read the sign we were stood over there looking at it and I was like, ah, oh, she's not a stray, she doesn't need our help. And then uh, she came up really, uh, she walked up behind us and she really um, sort of like, yeah, I'm sorry guys, I led you on. <laughs> yeah, her, her whole like attitude and like body language changes when you read that, that poster. It's so weird. She's got such a lovely little character. Yeah. Haven't you scrumptious girls? She wasn't our best friend straight away. But uh, yeah, we've kind of grown this little friendship. But what's going to be nice is that when we drive off, because we uh, will obviously be leaving this place at some point, it won't be really tough, will it? Because she's just living in luxury down here. It's incredible. She's just had mates for a week that look after her and give her a very small quantity of scrambled eggs in the morning. <laughs> On you go, you gorgeous little things. <laughs> yeah. 
Ready? Yep. Go. So one thing that I really wanted to do in Sardinia was to go snorkeling. So I'm going to tick it off the list today. You could look this good. Admittedly, I didn't see much sea life, but any excuse to swim in this amazingly clear and beautiful sea, I take the opportunity. The sun sets on another gorgeous day in paradise. We look back now and realise how naive we were to our situation and the impending restrictions. Good morning, we've had another really good sleep here. Very quiet as usual. It's a bit chilly this morning but First things first, we've got to greet the pooch because she has been patiently waiting outside. Let's see if she wants to come and say hello. Morning, Matilda. Oh, itchy ears. Oh. <laughs> it's probably about 9 a.m. currently and it's a lot easier to wake up when the sun's out and it's quite warm. Although it's a little bit, uh, a little bit um, dewy this morning, so it's creating a nice little mist over the sea. So we're going to be here for a few more hours. Uh, we've got some jobs to do, get the van ready, but later on we might be being picked up by the Westphalia Digital Nomads. So they've kind of been giving us advice throughout this whole period that we've been here. So basically what's going to happen is they're going to come here, then we're going to drive off in a convoy, and they're hopefully going to take us to a campsite where we can sort of self-isolate for the next few days. I don't know how long exactly, because there might be some forms that we need to fill in saying when we arrived in the country, and we need to keep ourselves to ourselves for quite a little while. So hopefully the campsite's open, that'll be that, I think. I'm not sure really what's going to happen. So as we had a bit of time to kill this morning and the weather's really nice, we've done a bit of spring cleaning on the van, wiped down the surfaces, got rid of some dirt and tidied everything up a bit. And now we've just got about half an hour to maybe an hour until we have to leave this place, so we're going to go for one last walk with the dog. You're going to miss this place? Yeah, I don't want to go. It's for the greater good. Oh, this is my like playground every day. <laughs> we'll come back. We're being sensible. I hope we can come back. If we get sent home straight after the campsite. Well, it is what it is. We've got to be no, sensible in the day. One <laughs> <laughs> so that means we're going to have to say goodbye to you, Matilda. Weird, because we know that she's happy here. And this is her home, and she is living a fantastic life, but we've become good buddies, haven't we, been? If it was normal travel, we would stay here for as long as we could, really, wouldn't we? Yeah. But we intend after quarantine to come back. Say hello. I'll see if I can get you some treats. <laughs> get you a bonio. 
something nice. She doesn't like normal things that dogs like. She doesn't like the ball. She's 13 plus years old, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Although she doesn't really act like him most of the time. One thing she does like is a good blooming scratch behind the ears. So Matilda ran after the van for quite a while and I thought that might have been a bit harder than we thought it might be because she didn't ever come in the van, she didn't want to. So that's that and we, we've said that we'll come and check on her. She's not following now so that's that. So on to the campsite but Let's see if we get stopped by the police. We convoyed with the Westphalia Digital Nomads to a campsite not too far away. And this became our temporary home for a lot longer than we had expected. Join us next time to see what our life in lockdown consists of.